Wait, why why couldn't why couldn't the wait 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 why couldn't those things still be mental states, but things that are subconscious? So in other words, they're still part of your mind, but the agent is presumably never going to have translucency towards those states. Oh, so because. Oh, because because I I was under the impression that you just agreed with me that all it means to say that you have or possess the concept is that you have epistemic access to it. No, 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 no. But wait, you you said that if what you're asking what would be those other states that I'm not aware of, and I'm like saying, well, I'm asking you why would it be why would it be like some sort of contradiction for those things to be mental states, but the agent doesn't have any translucent access to them. Like, what's the issue? Because, there? Like, it's perfectly, because, it's perfectly coherent to say that those things would be mental states. It doesn't strike me as an analytic falsehood. No, look, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just going by your definitions. I'm not. I'm not introducing anything outside of the definitions that you just gave me. What you from what? Uh, so I think there's like something you you, you agreed to that maybe uh, we're not like either one of us is not understanding fully what was agreed to. Do we? Do you agree that? All it means to possess the concept is to have epistemic access to it. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. like if, okay. we, if you're taking yes. possession, if you're just taking possession to mean like some sort of like epistemic access in a matter of degrees to the to the concept. I'm trying, I'm trying to understand the way you're using the terms. Look, because if you say you can possess, if you say you can possess an, a, a concept, um, but you only have epistemic parts to it, then you're then you're then you're either contradicting yourself or you're saying you only possess parts of it. I'm saying, or else those terms. I'm, I'm saying you only possess parts of it. Right. So if you only possess parts of it, where is the the rest of it? Where is that located? Because if you're going to say that that's also mental, then it well, seems let, like you're still possessing those wait, other wait, parts, wait, unless you're using possess in two different terms. Well, let me just say this, right? Like, let's suppose that I wouldn't know where those other states are located. How does it follow from that that those things wouldn't be mental? Oh, I never said there's like an entailment there. I'm just saying that no, you, in that sense, do you still you said, possess? You said that you said you, you asked this question, right? You asked the question, mm -hmm. if you don't have if if you only have partial epistemic access mm -hmm. to some mental states, but not mm -hmm. others, doesn't that imply that the others there are extra mental? So in other words, they're not mental? Or so I asked the question. Yeah, I asked the question. And I said, well, why wouldn't they be mental? Because look, just because you wouldn't have any translucent access to those things, it doesn't follow from that that they couldn't be mental, right? Under my view, they would be mental. It's just you don't okay. have access. Yeah, so but then, okay, so you're saying that you don't possess them, but nevertheless, they're mental? So it's in your head, but you don't possess it. You, yeah, have you possess them. Access. Look, you have partial access to some of the key mental components, and then you don't have access in other, like areas, right? Of like what it means to say I have access to those concepts in my head. Like, what's the problem there? Partial so access. Nature. Yeah, I have partial access to some mental states, and others I don't. Okay, I never uh, said there's a problem. I'm I'm just trying to understand the view. Um, so you're saying that there are these things in your head, and you ha but you can only access parts to them and not other parts. Yeah. Okay. And the content is supposed to be semantical. Well, is that correct? It, yeah. Oh, I and mean, I just I, I, I just took it that if you say semantic. you have something in your I'm head sure that you possess it, but I guess you're using possess in a technical just sense. semantic content. So in one sense you possess them, but not in the other sense. Yeah. You possess them in the sense part, that they're. So your, uh, I mean, Rody, are you there? Well, I think there's like a number of things you could. Wait, wait. You, uh, yeah. Do you understand the view? Yeah. So. Can you like recap what the view is? So because may he, I think he, I think he, Venus understands. I think it's, I think, I think it's very, very straightforward. Sorry, what was that? Your it sounds like your mic. You just threw it in some like. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in first, the yeah. So first of all, I'm playing a game right now, and second of all, it seems to me like you said it straightforwardly. 
Like there is nothing to get further playing. No, but he's asking if the if the if the content there is semantic, right? No, it doesn't have to be semantic. Okay. And yeah, then I said, well, it doesn't have to be semantic. It's not exhausted by semantic content. Wait, what's the what's an example oh, of non semantic yeah. content? Yeah, it, it can be something that is an an acquainted. Who's Jay? Sorry, what was that again? Let me get closer. Okay, it might be, yeah, I said it, it might be also something that is an acquainted I hate rather than semantic. Hearing this with AirPods in the fucking okay. car. Okay. What were you gonna say, Venus? Oh, I mean, when you say it's epist, I just have a hard time. What's an ex? When you say it's an epistemic axis, I just take it that if you say it's epistemic, you say it's gonna be um, an object of knowledge. But then maybe maybe you want to include knowledge of the knowledge how in that I don't know I'm I'm still, I'm still like trying to figure out this view because it seems like this view is going to imply some crazy stuff though but um I don't want to say anything until I understand the view fully I guess you're using possess in a technical sense. What's the argument that I'm not in the brain of that? What what the hell do skeptical scenarios have to do with this? Well, that seems like what you're asking is like. No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking okay. you, what's the argument that seems counts as justification? What? It seems to me that they're good at logic. No, no, no. But when you use seemings, when you use seemings as an argument for why seemings are a correct form of justification, you're just begging the question. What? See, I don't understand what you're, you're begging the here. question. You're using no. seemings. You're using seemings in order sure. to justify your seemings. Sure. Sure, I don't care. Oh, so like, you agree that you're begging? Just quick heads question. up, we're at the halfway you mark. We're 30 minutes, and we only have 30 That's minutes to figure so out whether or not T-Jump is a moron. Well, I don't remember this, but it doesn't matter, right? Because the point is, I'm not making a claim that... Um, I'm not making some kind of claim that um, is in some way circular or involving some kind of premise that... Uh, my interlocutor would have no reason to accept um, if they didn't accept the conclusion of the argument. Right. So, but you don't think this is so the case I don't if see I were to... Reason. No, no, yeah. but you don't think that this is the case if I present to you an argument as such, where, let's just say the argument runs like this. Um, if the mental facts are ontologically underdetermined by the physical facts, then mental facts are not identical to the physical facts. Premise two, um, it's the case that mental facts are ontologically underdetermined by the physical facts. Conclusion, therefore, mental facts are not identical to physical facts. Would you construe such an argument in such a way against the physicalist? Because that seems to be some sort of line that you're running at times when you argue against physicalists and naturalists in general. To, well, you need to argue that there's an underdetermination relation. Right. Yeah, and so if you and, argue that there's an underdetermination relation, then I don't see what the problem with that argument is. Wait, but to, to, even, to even argue that there is an ontologic underdetermination relation, whatever set of reasons that you provide for that premise, it's already going to assume that there is not going to be an identity relation to begin with. That's what it means for the plausibility of that premise to be parasitic on the plausibility of the conclusion which is what my account of question begging is. Well, no, but the point is you could give reasons for somebody. What, you're talking about an analytic identity? Yeah, presumably it could be any. I'm just saying in general, if you're, argu if you're arguing that there is some ontological underdetermination, whatever set of reasons that you could provide for that premise is already going to be parasitic on the plausibility of the conclusion. Well, somebody might think there's a synthetic identity, but not be aware of evidence... Um, that can be given to show that there's an underdetermination relation. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not talking about their opaqueness. I'm not talking about the person's opaqueness to evidence. I'm talking about whether or not what, is, what do you mean by that? Whether or not they uh, they don't have transparent epistemic access to the state of affairs that would constitute mm -hmm. evidence. Whether or not there's underdetermination, right? But that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but that's not the same thing. Was what then I'm getting. Not, at. It has nothing to do. Objection. It has nothing to do with whether or not the evidence presented to them or the possible evidence that could be presented to them is opaque or not. Right? Huh? It has not.
What are you not understanding? I don't know what, Talk, you, what you're saying. What do you mean we're, by evidence? We're not being talking. Opaque? We're talking about if you presume that there is an ontological gap, right, as one of your premises within the argument, that's already going to presuppose or whatever set of reasons that you could provide for that argument is going to be part parasitic on the conclusion being plausible, which they already reject that there is underdetermination anyway. Yeah, they, they, might, reject, they might reject that there's underdetermination, right? That doesn't mean you can't give additional arguments. No, I didn't it. say, I, so now you're misconstruing it again. I didn't say anything as to whether or not they couldn't give additional arguments. I'm just saying that the plausibility is parasitic on the conclusion. I don't get it. And they don't have any, well, what don't you get? I think you know exactly what I mean when you say, when I say that it's parasitic on the conclusion. Why, why is it that you can't give an argument that there's underdetermination? Like, what's ruling that out? I said that if they don't have a reason, if they don't have a plausible reason presented to them that could convince them otherwise that there isn't an identity relation, they could just plausibly deny that there's ontological um, underdetermination, that there's an ontological gap. They could deny that premise plausibly. So what? And the set of reasons that you've given seem to only be able to rely on the, par uh, on the apparent parasitism on the conclusion. I'm not following that. I don't see why it's not possible to give them an argument to show. To, it's not, I don't see why it's not possible to adduce reasons for them to redu revise their view. Yeah. Well, who cares whether they can plausibly reject it? That doesn't mean I, that I'm not in a position to be able to offer reasons. They can plausibly reject it because the set of reasons that you provided is just going to assume the conclusion. I, I don't see how you've established that. I just did. So... As I just somebody, explained. somebody thinks somebody thinks that um, there's an identity relation between physical facts and mental facts, right? Which is, and which is also them. to presume that there wouldn't be an ontological gap, by the way, between those two facts. Yeah, yeah right. that commits them to thinking there isn't an underdetermination relation, right? Right. Yeah. So if I give an argument that there's an underdetermination relation, right, that's a reason for them to change their view. If it's there would argument. be a reason. It would be a reason. But yeah. if you were to provide that, if you were, if you were to provide another way of restating that premise in order to exemplify your reason, you would be just restating your conclusion, which is that there isn't an identity relation between those states. So if I, if you say, you mean because you mean because there's you mean because you you want to say that. Um, that arguing that there's an underdetermination relation is just to argue there that is no identity. There's no relation. identity relation. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I don't see what the problem is there. We'll look back at what Angstreich's definition is of question begging, and let's see if he's consistent. Some kind of premise that uh, my interlocutor would have no reason to accept. Um, if they didn't accept the conclusion of the argument. I mean, what does he think he's doing? What do you think I just explained to him, right? In that same exact argument, to just say that there is an ontological gap is just another way of saying that there is no identity relation. If we go back to Jack Angstreich's definition, right, of what he means by question begging, then the premise within the argument, right, is the second premise that we're going to look at here. It says... There is an ontological gap. Okay, second premise. In other words, this is just an example of another argument, right, where I have no reason to accept the second premise unless if I already accepted the conclusion. Uh, go ahead, Darth, what would you like to say? From the get-go, there is a sigh of desperation and worry. We'll see where this goes. Okay, um, I have an argument against the existence of God. Go ahead. Okay, premise one, if God exists, then it is the case that the not-God worldview contains a logical contradiction. Premise two, it is not the case the not-God worldview contains a logical contradiction. Conclusion, therefore, God does not exist. Um, <clears throat> how, do you, how do you instantiate it? How do you, how do you know the not-God world doesn't have a contra contradiction? What should I even say to this? <laughs> How do you know the not God worldview doesn't contain a contradiction? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Is theism a theory? Is theism a theorem of logic? It's not. 
um, the proposition God exists is not derivable or deducible from the axioms of classical logic. Um, and it's conceivable that there's a world in which case God does not exist. I'm not seeing what the contradiction is there. It's pretty, it's a pretty stupid question. Um, I don't know why he thought that this was the way to go, but I mean, it's just more evidence of the fact that a lot of people don't understand like how logical possibility works. Contradiction. Because what it means, because of what it means. Hold on, hold on. The middle of explaining it and he cuts me off i wonder why i mean pretty strange they would cut me off when i'm in like literally two words are being blurted out and i'm about to explain it to him because he knows where this is going okay you're not going to run amok like you are in other rooms okay in darth's vocabulary running amok is being interrupted when you just had like two words in <laughs> You, you re re repeat the syllable. I thought he was about to say ribbit, ribbit. Just him again, so I can properly respond to it. All right. Um, if God exists and it is the case and not God worldview contains a logical contradiction. Premise two, it is not the case that not God worldview contains a logical contradiction. Conclusion, therefore, God does not exist. Okay, that is, that is, that is, <laughs> that's is, modus listen, listen to me. Okay, that arguments for dark, 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 dark. You don't know what modus poens is, listen, listen, That's listen, argument listen, listen for me. Did he just say that that was an argument from ignorance? Mo Modus Tolan's arguments are arguments from ignorance now, guys. Modus Trollin's more like? Okay, listen to me carefully, okay? The syllogism that you have just presented is sophistry, and I'm going to break it down and show it to you. Okay, okay? break it down. It is, for... Okay, it is pure sophistry. Now, if you say if God exists and not God world possesses, I'm waiting for the conjunction. Okay, if you if you if you listen to me, what's the contradiction in the not God worldview? What's the contradiction in the not God worldview, Darth Dawkins? Give me a set of two inconsistent propositions entailed by the atheist worldview. Well, there you have it, folks. That's how you press Darth Dawkins in a debate where he has mods. It's that simple. You don't allow him to elaborate on a point because he bloviates. And then he overtalks you if you try to rebut him. So the tactic here is to overtalk him in order to try to get an answer out of him so he wouldn't waste my time with his bloviation. Why did you immediately start cross talking me when I was speaking? Bloviation. Yeah, let him finish. Okay. This is what these idiots do. What's yeah, a logical contradiction know, in the listen to, listen, to me careful, listen to me carefully. It's not being a robot. Ah, uh, yes, because pressing someone for justification is completely robotic. We should consult ask yourself on this one. You have behaved badly before, before on other platforms. Well, at least he said something right in this debate. It's not going to happen here. You are not going to be tolerated to cross talk over me. And, uh, yeah, well, I guess he just tolerated it for like a few seconds. Okay. Do you understand the rules? All right. Okay. If you ever talk to me while I'm speaking, I will kick you from the stage. I have dealt with you before many times before. You are a punk. You're a sophist. Yeah, and you're not that's that smart. a fucking retard. And this goes back to bite him. This goes back to bite Dart Dawkins for initiating the insult from the gate. Okay, what's uh, up? Okay, okay. No, actually, what's actually, that would be you. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Listen your worldview is garbage. What is me. the I'm logical? Not, okay. Okay, darn garbage. What is the logical the contradiction? I'm telling you, I'm going to kick you from the stage. What is the logical? Okay, goodbye. All this right. guy is such a freaking troll. It's pathetic. Okay, I mean, I, I... see, uh, the thing about me is, is that, um, even though you might characterize me as a troll, um, not only am I the best at debating, I'm also the best at trolling these people. Over what garbage. is the logical contradiction? Listen, to show you, to show you that I'm a patient man. I would have been completely justified in removing you from the room. Well, justified in the sense that you would have to appeal to God in order to make that claim warranted? I will give you one more chance. All right. If you are rude and you cross talk and you keep on doing this rapid fire machine gun talking and you are bickering, I will eject you from the room. Okay? Are we clear? And the reason why I'm telling you this is because this is what you have always done on other platforms because you are a sophist. Not seeing where the sophistry is here. Uh, it's fallacious reasoning to ask people over and over again for uh, just uh, what the contradiction is because I'm not seeing one.
you do not know how to dialogue like an adult. Now, your first premise that if God exists, there will be a contradiction in the not God world. What would that contradiction be? And this is where he loses the debate because it's his job to provide what the contradiction is, not me. Why is he that? Why is he asking me what the contradiction is if I'm not making the claim? <laughs> God damn it! There is none. Listen to me carefully. No, if if you double conditional. You say that is. God is logically. Listen to, me. Okay, listen to me. Did I not fucking warn you? Yeah, seriously. You got yourself like an adult. What is wrong with these okay. people? Well, what is, what you is say wrong? that the atheist Listen, world... Care. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, wow. asshole. Doesn't That's want to answer a single question. question. What's the... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're going to yeah, burn in hell. Is... Oh, Darth Dawkins does end up saying at the end that the logical contradiction under atheism is the atheist worldview itself. And that atheism contradicts theism, and that somehow shows what the logical contradiction is. So I'll take the W on that. Um, I'll take just the extreme W on the Jack Ang strike. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's awful. And then what you see there at the beginning is just Venus running his mouth again about nonsense concerning conceptual opacity. Until next time, game over, lights out, keep folding those chairs.